What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash stories about Kevin. Alright, this story's called, Kevin Caught the Gay Condition. Hey people, usual I'm on mobile speech, oh boy. Backstory. I knew Kevin back in high school in the mid-late 90s in central Scotland. Back in those days, most people were very homophobic and never really knew about the gay community. And as stupid high school kids, we often used the word gay as an insult as well as the negative stereotypes that went with them. Fortunately, nowadays people are now open-minded and more accepting of LGBTQ+. Look at Buttica Plus. Now, Kevin was very gullible and believed that everything that the other kids said about gays was true. And I mean the really stupid stuff like all gays wear pink and talk in an effeminate voice and all gays are automatically transvestites and all gay men are attracted to every man and will immediately try to bang them as soon as their ass is in view etc etc now most people grow out of this stupidity and move on but not kevin because he believed that even looking up facts about the gay community meant that you will catch it and become one of them you heard that right people he thought it was a disease now to the story 10 years after leaving high school i'm walking down a main street shopping district and i see this big pink one man pride march waddling towards me in high heels, a feather boa, huge sun hat, skin-tight yoga pants, and big sunglasses. Everything he was wearing was pink. He was also wearing lipstick and had his nails done. I'm then stunned when this giant ball of cotton candy started talking to me in the fakest over-effeminate voice I had ever heard. This guy sneezed glitter. He was so gay. Here's the cast. <laughs> what? Sorry. That took a minute to hit me. Here's the cast. Uh, there's me. Kevin! Him, which is himself. Bouncer. Or Steve. Bouncer Steve. Kevin in a very loud and camp voice. Happy, how are you, darling? Oh, it's been ages since I've seen your sweet face. Um, do I know you? It's me, Kevin. Or Karen, as I go by now. Uh, Kevin, did you lose a bet or something? What, what's with the getup? Now, Kevin usually wears workout clothes or expensive jeans and a t-shirt. Oh, I'm just being me. I come out, I came out six months ago. Oh, congrats. I'm proud of you for being so open about it. It would also explain why you were so homophobic in high school. You were just deflecting. I get it now. No, silly. I wasn't gay then. Like I said, I've only been gay for six months. Now, I'm straight and have a few friends that are gay, bisexual, and lesbian. And know that if you're gay, you are usually born that way. So I knew something was amiss. We were a few doors down from a bar and asked if he wanted a drink to catch up. Of course, he says yes and proceeds to order the most flamboyant cocktail he could think of. So a, a yummy drink. While he's sipped from his glass full of fruit and umbrellas. Okay, that just sounds good. I asked him about his car. For context, Kevin was a very good mechanic and bought the frame for a BMW 320 from a scrapyard for a couple of hundred. He then spent over a year working on it, spending his savings on the leather interior, the incredible sound system and speakers, and he tuned the engine to perfection, including a nitrous kit. He put a silver trim around the coach line and painted painted it in the richest black I've ever seen. It was beautiful and by far his most prized possession. Oh, that horrible thing? I sold it for 500 pounds to someone and bought a, a Volkswagen Beetle. Bug, convertible, and bubblegum pink. <laughs> what? Uh, yes, you know, gays can't drive black BMWs. It's illegal, and of course you know that gays are bad with money. I was genuinely horrified by this statement, and then remembered that Kevin was an avid collector of football soccer memorabilia. He had signed t-shirts and programs that were worth a small fortune. Me with my head in my hands. I'm afraid to ask. What about your football memorabilia? I 
I threw it away, of course. It's illegal for gays to plan to like sports. Anyone now says? As he chuckles to me, thinking I'm the idiot, I see Steve walking in, getting ready for the night shift. So I call him over. Now, Steve is a big guy and has a lot of tattoos and even more scars. He says hello to me and then I introduce him to Kevin. Kevin, this is Steve. Well, hello there. Hi. He's a man of few words. Steve, uh, tell Kevin what you do for a living. I'm the head bouncer and in charge of security. And what did you do before this? I was in the parachute regiment. What car do you drive? Mercedes AMG. I forgot what type. Uh, I'll ask him next time I see him. And what's your favorite football team? Celtic. I'm a season ticket owner, and I've been for years. And, uh, what's your boyfriend's name? Frank. At that point, Kevin's head jumps up and his eyes were bulging out of his head. What? You heard? Uh, tell me something, Kevin. Uh, excuse me. Karen, please explain to us how you came out. Well, I was at the cup final and my team scored the winning goal just as, I, just as the final whistle blew. Blue. I was so excited, I grabbed the, next pe the, the person next to me thinking it was a girl that I saw earlier and gave him a big kiss. Afterwards, I saw it was a man. I must have caught gay, so that was it. I'm gay now. Myself and Steve look in disbelief at how stupid that sounds and in unison shout out, You're not gay! We then sit there and have a long talk about the reality in the bullcrap when all of a sudden we could see the the penny drop and it dropped with a clang kevin leaps up and screaming my beamer not the fact that he had been living as a gay man for six months no his car was more important he runs out of the bar down the high street straight into the clothing store he's in there for about five minutes and then comes running out wearing a tracksuit with the tag still on running up to his car the pink volkswagen and peeled out of the street as fast as the poor car could go. Me and Steve look at each other and jump in his Mercedes and chase after him. Why, you ask? Simple. It was too good to miss. We followed him to his house and watched as he stormed inside. Next thing we hear is shouting and swearing and then items being thrown out of his window. Mostly clothes. All pink and fluffy. Then we see this poor little guy in tears being thrown out by Kevin and holding a bag with his belongings. We helped him pick up his stuff and gave him a lift to his friend's house. He turned out to be Kevin's boyfriend of six months. Kevin is now back to the way he was, but now with an open mind and a newfound respect for the uh, LGBTQ plus community. I haven't seen him for a while now, but every time I do, I still call him Karen to piss him off. Roast for grammar. Anyone who wants it for YouTube, help yourself. Laters! Uh -huh. That was the waving sound. I don't know what else to do. Um, very interesting story. I'm just saying if, uh, if he could live as a gay man for six months and Part of that including living with a, another gay man for who knows how long and that probably included some some sex probably most likely uh, If he was a hundred percent straight, I don't think that I don't know It's just I think he might be at least bi because you know I don't I don't think a straight man could t could live with another man for six months and, and do it with him because I, I Don't think I'd be able to Re okay, but regardless cool story I'm glad you shared it. I'm just very grateful that we have such a large community of people to, to share amazing experiences that they've had 100% without a doubt. This story's called... I work at Home Depot. The customers here, who I mercifully don't interact with for very long, have convinced me that Darwin didn't know crap. Fair warning before we start, I can be vulgar. If you don't like vulgarity, I won't be offended if you skip, if you skip right over for this post, I will be. All right. With that out of the way, let's set the stage. As a retail worker, I interact with a lot of people. And statistics.
statistically speaking, you'll run into Kevins at some point. The unusual thing, however, is the clockwork regularity with which it happens. Since they're all mostly one-off experiences, I will introduce you all to the endless horde of Kevins that continue stealing oxygen from functional life forms. An employee of a company that we contract with, staying vague for the obvious reasons, decided to shoplift from the store he went to work at. You know, the location that can easily give the cops his bank info, social security number, and current home address. On my day off, while I was buying supplies for a project, I was accosted for help. I said no and was called the N-word. I may have a varied ethnic background, many groups of which have effective racial slurs against them, but I'm not black, nor do I have particularly dark skin. Elderly pair of women said they would call President Donald Trump. <gasps> to have him force Home Depot to install a scroll saw in our store so they could get their 4x4 posts notched. Wow! Sounds like just the thing he'd, he'd shoot for. Freedom! An elderly Kavina thought that an eight-year-old in a kid's workshop apron worked for us and asked said kid a question. Kid's parents found it ridiculous. Kavina called the store in a fit of rage and demanded we not allow children to wear the aprons. <laughs> the store. <laughs> what? The same freaking day as above! Another customer thought a kid in the apron worked for us and threatened to call the Department of Labor to report us for child exploitation. Hot poggers! Kevin, around 50 years old, was holding two packs of spec screws in clear front plastic containers. Screws inside clearly visible. Upon seeing me, he holds both boxes up to me and asks if the eight by one and an quarter inch screws are bigger than the eight by one inch screws. I declined to answer. We had a regular that we called Methamphetamine Mickey in the break room. He would come in nightly at five minutes to close, clearly tweaking, and buy hundreds to thousands of dollars worth of product. When the actual owner of the credit card he was using came into the store to explain the fraud and talk with account services, he was back in the store that night, this time shoplifting since the card no longer worked. Numerous people have asked me if the batteries that come in the drill starter kits will fit the drills in the same box. Kevin, remodeling his house, brings in plans so I can order the windows it calls for. He begins telling me how he's changed the window sizes and layout from what the plans and material sheet call for and can't fathom why I can't just go by what the plan says. Tons. And I mean thousands upon freaking thousands. Uh, of students who won't take copying your dorm key as a literal crime as a good explanation for why I won't do it. I've been threatened with blackmailing from local businesses, legal action, losing my job, and even some violence, though the last one has only happened once. Kevin and his wife, both retirement age, stood in front of the bathrooms and couldn't figure out which was the men's room and which was the ladies' room. The rooms are labeled clearly. A Latina lady, I was trying to help was looking for a 20-foot creosote pole and a meter box so the power company would hook up her power. She didn't speak English and my Spanish is barely passable. So when she asked me if the small box with the meter box in it had the pole in, I assumed I had mistranslated what I was saying. One trip to my bilingual co-worker later, we determined that no, she just had no concept of how big 20 feet was. Even after we gave gave her a physical demonstration with a tape measure. Yikes. Sounds like a fun place to work though. If you've got like, uh, I don't know, like a drink selling station somewhere. I don't know, something about Home Depot just makes me so incredibly thirsty. You have no idea. It's just seeing all the tools and like all the just hardware stuff. It's like, oh man, I can already feel the work and the sweat and the, ah, I need some drinks, man, yeah. But they never have any when I want them, so. 
any hardware store owners sell some drinks you'll make a bit of money maybe especially if i go there then i'll buy at least one or two drinks maybe maybe one at least one maybe uh, i, I don't want to make promises this story's called kavina comes for coffee i have the pleasure of knowing a kavina although i'm not sure whether to call that a blessing or a curse as i've had many irritating encounters with her and her kavinaness through the many years i knew her this is a story about one of the times she came to my place for a coffee and a ketchup i'd known her for about five years at this point and she'd come to my place a few times a week so needless to say there was no reason for her not to know where things were my kitchen isn't hard to navigate the fridge is on the right against the side of the wall. My pantry cupboard next to the fridge on the left, followed by my oven and coffee machine. Over to the far left wall is the microwave and cupboard with plates, cups, mugs, pots, and pans. Now you know the layout of my kitchen. On with the story. Kavina arrived and we did our customary Hi! How are you? intros before I asked if she wanted coffee. She said, Sure! And then then, with a confused look on her face, asked, Where are the coffee cups? So I pointed to the cupboard next to the microwave. She looked at where I was pointing and then proceeded to walk in the opposite direction and open the oven in search of the mugs. Um, Kavina, that's the oven. Well, I can't find the cops. I'm seriously confused at this point. They're over here, pointing to the cupboard. Oh, well, why didn't you say that? Ignoring that, I continued making myself a coffee. Can you please get the milk? Where's the milk? In the fridge. I point to the fridge. She walked to the fridge, trying trying to open it from the wrong side, it opens from the left but she was trying to open it from the right. It opens from the other side. She opened the fridge and spent a few seconds staring blindly into the fridge before I told her the milk is on the fridge door, which she should know as the milk is only ever on the inside of the fridge door. I proceeded to make myself a coffee as she did the same. She thankfully remembered that the spoons are in the cutlery drawer under the oven. I finished making my coffee first and got out of her way so she could have more room. I'm in a wheelchair, so I tend to fill a space more than an able-bodied person. While Kavina was making her coffee, she lost the spoon when she mindlessly placed it back in the coffee container after she put a spoonful into her cup. I reminded her where the spoon was after she started looking aimlessly around the counter for it. Once she was done making her coffee, I asked her if she could please put the milk back in the fridge. She picked up the sugar in the coffee container and began to walk towards the fridge, leaving the milk on the counter. Kavina, that's not the milk. She looked down and realized what she was doing, and then put them back on the counter and the milk in the fridge instead. At this point, I was getting a little flustered, as you probably are by reading this. But do you think her kavina is done? Nope. We sat in the lounge room watching TV, drinking our coffee, and catching up. In the middle of our conversation, she started looking around the room in concern, so I asked her what was wrong. Did you see where I put my coffee? My brother brain is about to explode from confusion. In your hand? Yes, dear reader. She was holding her coffee and forgot where it was. I honestly wish that I was making this up. I cannot, for the life of me, understand how someone can be so damn stupid. We are no longer friends, so I feel no guilt telling you this story. The reason she gave for defriending me is a story for another day. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I don't know about you guys, but it straight up sounds like this woman has some, like, I don't know, some like neurological problems going on up in there because I 100% have seen people with neurological issues do stuff like this. And I don't know, this type of behavior is very consistent with neurological issues. And I'm looking through the comments and I'm seeing someone say, oh yes, definitely has auditory and visual processing problems. And they're like, oh, I have a kid like this. So uh, make sure you take it easy with uh, Kavina here. I mean, for all we know, she could have done something horrible, but we don't, so...
Kevin ignores the doctors. I don't know this Kevin personally. He was diagnosed with Brovid-19 last week, and he's already trying to get back to work. He's pumped full of steroids, so he feels invincible. The worst has yet to come for this Kevin. He'll probably end up much worse off. Yikes. Yes, make sure you stay put if you have the Modelo virus. Seriously, be considerate. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.